Hey, welcome to this week's governance call. This is our eighth call, and if you've been following on a weekly basis, some of these points may be redundant, but it's pretty important to cover them. Uh, there's always new people that join the community as investors, users, or artists, so we try and keep people informed and updated as possible. That way they can uh, partake in governance while not being like ignorant on things or curious and afraid to participate because they they just are afraid and not informed. But yeah. Uh, Alex, if you have anything else to say? Yeah, um, sure. I mean, totally agree. I, I feel like I'm my, uh, my weekly cheerleading uh, intro is getting kind of repetitive, but um, I think things are going really well. Um, it's been the last two months have been like a real learning experience for me. Um, one of the, one of the biggest things just like these last few weeks is um, just learning that, price um price of the token and you know um our daily iteration cycle or our weekly iteration cycle isn't something to worry about too much um you know i i feel like on the surface it might seem like not a lot is getting done but that behind the scenes like there is a lot happening um and it's actually pretty amazing like how our organizational output is going up um, and I'm, you know, I'm really fortunate to be learning from other people um, and guys like Scott Lewis, who has more experience. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting for me to see that. And I think that, you know, things are going really well. And I'm really excited for us to start iterating really fast and pumping stuff out more. I mean, we can notice that from internal talks, like the gallery squad is slowly pushing stuff uh, like on a quicker basis because it's more organized and there's more people that are now like working together and every day there's basically more contributors yeah absolutely it's uh it's pretty amazing to see the gallery squad is absolutely amazing it's like just yesterday i saw that landing page mock-up by jb um i won't give any spoilers but it's it's pretty dope so yeah that's awesome J jb is great <laughs> yeah. they're all great but yeah <laughs> Yeah, anyways, that's all for me. All right. Uh, does anyone have any specific uh, points of discussion they'd like to talk about during this call? All right. So I'm going to just. Yeah, I, oh. I, I had one. Uh, this is Scott. Yeah. Um, Scott, Scott Lewis. Um, yeah, yeah. Yesterday on, on, on Twitter, I, I sort of just like put a doc um, that uh, Alex uh, Will Price and I had been sort of iterating on. Um, talking about the the v2 design uh or a v2 design which may be the v2 design if people like it um for the d1 um vaults and yeah i was wondering if anyone had any, any like questions or if questions are appropriate for nftx governance calls yeah totally um and i i will actually jump in on that too it's, it's good to see you here scott um <laughs> it's uh so yeah so i don't know if you guys saw scott kind of uh, tweeted that that uh spec uh or that document outlining some of the features we want in the next version of, of d1 vault um i was saying just before the meeting that um before before launching i refactored the code in an attempt to reduce the contract size and i split up the state into a separate contract uh, somehow this refactor actually increased the contract size code, but um, I was too close to launch, so I didn't have time to refactor it all again. Uh, so basically the, the current contract, we have this constant problem where the, the, it's pushing up against that 24 kilobyte limit, uh, and it makes, us very, it makes it very difficult for us to add upgrades. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna be rewriting the contract um, the way I, wish I had done it in the first place while also adding in these new features that um, were in that document that Scott posted. And my hope is to just pump this out really fast. Um, and then after I pump it out, then we can actually, I guess, start discussing it more. But um, yeah, I'm hoping I can get that done within like the next week. Uh, so that, yeah, this time next week we can, um, we can pick at it a bit. But if anyone else has thoughts or um, chop, I know we haven't even really had time to discuss this in the stand-up, but um, this is as good as time, time as any, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, I think we can talk about it at the end of the call. So at least we can gather some thoughts and maybe look at uh, Scott's document a bit more. But yeah, it's just so at least we know what people want to discuss during the call. 
Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yep. perfect. All right. But yeah, that that fits with me as well, Scott. And I have not checked it out yet, so I, I will do that right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Chop, uh, it's now your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dope. Uh, okay, so uh, not everybody is uh, on this call always, so I'll, I'll just uh, say what I'll do as my part of the governance call. So I, I basically I run through the weekly roundup. So what happened last week, uh, and then also uh, go a bit in depth on what uh, we're working on right now from a like organization point of view, and also like a governance point of view. Um, last week's uh, we've done quite a lot, uh, especially very impactful stuff being the create fault, uh, like fixing that and making that permissionless again. Uh, so that actually launched, uh, like I think on Monday, right? Um, what it means for people listening in is that now everybody can create a vault again, uh, so an index fund instead of only the DAO. Uh, so we have saw pretty big surge in like community spawned funds uh, yesterday. Uh, yesterday we've put up a tutorial on the documentation side and also on the front end, I think there's a PR open or already merged, uh, which redirects to the uh, tutorial, which basically goes into how to create an NFT index fund uh, step by step. Uh, it partially uses Etherscan because the current front end uh, is kind of and reliable to fully use it there. Uh, so uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, we have a new product like front end redesign coming up this month, as far as I know, like the target is this month, end of month. Uh, so that should solve everything uh, that's in the tutorial, but still like it shows that people want to go through the pain to make this fault because there's been, I think 10 or 10 plus faults being created since yesterday. So that's cool to see. Um, so that's the first biggest topic. Um, then the NFTX gallery a squad, which I'll uh, also talk about a bit after uh, this, is they're being pushed as a squad to be hired for the DAO. Uh, so I've pushed that proposal uh, to the forum two days ago and to snapshot a few hours ago, I think one or two hours ago. Um, which basically means that the entire gallery squad, so the people that uh, built the gallery, uh, will be hired as a squad to work uh, for the DAO, uh, being paid by the DAO and uh, leading uh, consumer products. Uh, that doesn't mean like nobody else can make products, of course, like uh, that's not the intent, but it's there. So we have a like dedicated full-time squad that pushes out products uh, day in, day out. Um, so that's cool. That's up for voting. Uh, so if you want those people to actually be hired, you have to vote. Uh, so please do, if you hear this. Um, then the biggest topic uh, after that is also governance related. It's about a bug bounty. Uh, we've talked about that on the previous call and it's essentially a bug that uh, was exploitable for less than 24 hours since Sam reported it a few months ago, uh, I think one and a half month ago or two. Um, so that's that was the reason that the create fault was actually paused. Uh, he reported it, nothing happened, everybody's safe, uh, but he uh, got a bug bounty because it uh, saved us from a lot of uh, yeah negativity. Uh, so that's been pushed through the snapshot and already has been paid by Alex on last Monday. Uh, so that is completely solved. So that's great. Uh, it, it, it does show that we need a, like a more structured bug bounty program so that we don't have to do individual bug bounty governance proposals every time somebody finds a, like a minor bug. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, in the works. And then the last thing, which is also a, like a separate topic on the agenda, so I'll move into that, is uh, the NFT hack event. It's a uh, EVE Global uh, hackathon for specifically aimed at the NFT scene. Uh, we've decided to sponsor that as not the head sponsor, but the, like the tire below, uh, both to get more exposure on NFTX as like the leading protocol for index funds uh, or NFT index funds. Uh, but also to uh, set out some like hackathon prizes and uh, help out beginning or like novice uh, hackers uh, to 
like utilize the NFTX protocol to hack stuff together. Uh, so we've got a prize pool of 5k uh, divided in three prizes, which is led by me, Alex, and Nick. Um, so that's up next week. So it starts on Thursday uh, and it ends on the end of Saturday. Um, that's about it. All right. So, uh, I mean, you covered the uh, XIP3, so the consumer yeah. product squad already. So I can just talk about XIP4. You think that, I, I mean, I think that's okay. Um, so XIP number four is uh, in regards to boosting liquidity of Punk Basic, so a D1 fund, single fund, uh, with Ether from the NFTX uh, slash Ether pair. Um, that's on SushiSwap, so the SLP that's currently staked on Onsen. Uh, so the proposal, I had talked about it with uh, Will Price. Um, it was basically to remove half of the SLP and use only the Ether uh, to bootstrap the Punk Basic pool. And uh, now that we have confirmation that uh, SushiSwap can route directly to NFTX uh, while using NFTX Ether as a like primary pool, we can make uh, D1 or D2 pairs and then uh, use liquidity as NFTX to pair them with. So it makes it like more efficient where we can use our own like governance token to create these pools and make it more of a hard money in the NFT ecosystem. Whereas just using ether might not do that as efficiently. The only worry is uh, like, will there be as much support and volume for people uh, if there's NFTX as the like base for the pairs or do people like don't care and they just trade regardless. Yeah, um, yeah so this is this is well, I, I don't think we're going to have a problem given that that sushi swap has said that they're they're willing to support NFTX as a, a routing asset. So um, uh, obviously aggregators will work regardless, but but having the, the native sushi swap UI work uh, is a win for us. And and so really what, what we're what we're gaining from this is is you know not only some elements of you know NFT access money, but also the ability to easily leverage uh, treasury asset, assets uh, across the various D1 and D2 funds to to uh, bootstrap liquidity yeah, and, I mean, and reduce slippage for people who want to use the funds. I was going to say, like, absolutely, because right now, like, we have a lot of inactive funds and we're in an industry or like a, a market where funds are barely or they're they have to be active if you want to stay with the market so it's very inefficient to not do anything with them go ahead alex um, yeah so um i just wanted to touch on this as well um it's i guess kind of ironic because i remember when i initially uh launched the project in the early weeks at least one or two people uh, brought this idea. I think Bob might have been one of them even, <laughs> but um, some people brought this idea of like NFTX as money and using it as a reserve asset uh, for the AMMs. Um, and I kind of shut the idea down. I thought it was pretty out there. Um, and then now, you know, we're circling back to it and it seems like a much better idea. Uh, to be honest, I never expected the NFTX market cap to grow so quickly. Um, so yeah, the fact that, you know, now our market cap is in like the hundreds of millions, um, and we have, uh, like a large portion of that in our treasury. Um, it kind of seems crazy not to take advantage of it. Like, you know, we have like $50 million or more of NFTX tokens in our treasury. Um, and on top of that, I think it does kind of close the circuit. Um, and bring, it brings everything together because NFTX, the token is no longer just a governance token. It'll also be like a, a very um, central token to our ecosystem, um, which over time will become correlated with NFT markets. So yeah, I think there's a lot of pros to this. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it's, it's a minor change on the surface, but I think it, it could make a lot of big differences. So, yeah, so uh, I was one of the people who like pushed for this in December. But uh, I, in hindsight, I don't know if it would have been the better decision because I think one of the reasons we were able to grow was because uh, like the we had so much liquidity in NFTX Ether. Totally, yeah. So, you know, I, it's, it's funny. I, I was against boosting the NFTX Ether liquidity. I thought you know it would be a distraction, but um, it, it's great having this huge treasury. It makes us much stronger. 
So it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like we're, we're pretty flexible because of that. I'll just point out that we can trial this uh, with the existing D1 funds, independent of what uh, Scott and Chop were mentioning uh, on, on future mm -hmm. contract upgrades. Oh yeah, yeah. cool. So, yeah, that's a good point too. So this this doesn't have to. Um, it can happen in parallel, right, Chop? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, one question I have for the basically uh, uh, targeted on the proposal itself. So there's XRP four being discussed on the forums at the moment, which is uh, very much like remove Eve from NFTX and uh, pair it with the D1. Uh, like, how do we? see ourselves moving forward, uh, coming to uh, scrap that whole ID. Uh, we remove all the E from basic funds or like a single funds and pair it against NFTX instead. Like, do we, uh, like, uh, Will, maybe, maybe you know, like, is it better yeah, I, to just... I think the consensus appears to be that we leave the NFTX E pool as uh -huh. is uh -huh. and we, we use, we create a new pool um, yeah. initially for Punk Basic as a trial mm -hmm. that is paired with NFTX, yeah. taking care to make sure that we get the initial exchange rate right, yep. and then uh, make sure that uh, SushiSwap has enabled support, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Um, publicize the fact that there's now an ability to buy and sell crypto punks with less than 1% slippage, mm -hmm. given how many Punk Basic we have in our treasury, yeah. and then reevaluate. So yeah, it's okay, quite cool. straightforward. Yeah, okay. Dope. So, so we leave the the idea is to leave the current Eve uh, funds up also, right? From the single funds. Yeah, I, I think I think we'll do this. That um, makes sense. As yeah. a one option, and, and and if it has the effect that we expect, then we we can um, yeah, yeah, yeah allocate as necessary. Great. great. So on on one thing that I would actually want to do is reduce uh, NFTX Ether, but like initially State and I wanted to do it just so we reduce our impermanent loss, even though we're staking on Onsen. Uh, like maybe like just taking 5% or 10% off the pier uh, would give us some Ether leeway and some NFTX leeway. I don't know what your thoughts on that are, Will. Not in regards um, to I, adding I, it I to Punk I don't think, I, I don't think it, it, it impacts what we do with Punk Basic, but, but um, without a plan for what to do with that liquidity and and given the extra dependence we'll have on the nftx eth pool in the future as yeah. it'll be one leg of of every multi-hop trade that that goes from eth um we're going to want that to be deep to so that slippage yeah, just, uh, is low enough to compensate for the 0.6 percent fees instead of 0.3 percent fees yeah just to just to like add on to what will says i think they're with the new sort of uh a spider web model or a hub and spoke model uh, for liquidity. We get uh, the deeper that pool is, the less market impact we get. The other part to consider is that um, anytime someone goes F to a uh, an NFTX uh, D1 token, that NFTX pool will be making LP fees. Um, so that would be like a second like revenue stream that would offset um, the impermanent loss or a second benefit that would offset the impermanent loss. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. I mean, yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, we have a lot of NFTX tokens in treasury. It's, it's good to put them to use. Yeah. I, um, I didn't consider yeah. that, uh, because we're routing through it, the volume would increase. I was just looking at current volume. Yeah. We, we, oh, we, we, yeah. we, we may want to look at, um, how users are interacting with our protocol once all of this is going and see if there are users that are doing um, that are buying with um, other base currencies like USDC or Tether, and then we might want to reevaluate whether those users would be better served by kind of splitting it up a little bit differently. But I, I think we can make those decisions with real data. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Once we have it. Uh, one other thing, um, just to jump in, um, should I should I talk about naming at all? Chop or finesse? Oh or yeah, anything? I mean, well, I mean that's a good. Uh, we're we're uh, pretty much done with the like okay. important points. So now mm -hmm. it's like anyone, if you want to talk about anything, we'll go ahead. So yeah, you can open with that. Cool. Um, yeah. So basically, with naming, you know, there's been a lot of discussion around the naming, and how I kind of messed up by adding this basic uh, suffix to a lot of them. So. Um, Anyways, yeah, we're thinking of, of dropping the basic off of um, the floor pools. So for instance, like Punk Basic, 
um, we're thinking of renaming that to Punk and then changing the current Punk to Punk X. Um, we're thinking we're going to try and focus more on the D1 pools, I think. Um, and then maybe, you know, we'll still keep the D2 pools in play, uh, but not emphasize them quite as much as they seem to be getting a little bit less traction. Uh, so that seems like a pretty easy decision. Most people that I've spoken to are on board with, you know, get, changing Punk Basic to Punk. Uh, the more difficult decision is with uh, funds like Axie Origin and mm -hmm. Kitty Gen Zero. Uh, you know, those aren't actually floor funds. Um, so like the Kitty Gen Zero fund, it's not really a floor fund. An actual Kitty floor fund would allow any kitties in it from any generation. Um, but the problem is the price on all on floor kitties is so low, it would make it unusable. Um, you need a higher price to make the gas, you know, worth it. So yeah, it's, I'm wondering whether we should, we should also go with the better name for those types of, so like kitty gen zero, that's most likely going to be our, our most popular kitty pool. Should we just call it kitty? Um, even though it's not actually a floor pool and same with Avis, Avistar base. Oh no. Anyway, stick with the kitty for that. Does anyone have no. thoughts on that? I I would not uh, name it kitty. Like I would try and keep the the parameters uh, the same for each one. Not like yeah, so one you dumb it down because you prefer consistency. Yeah, because mm -hmm. if a user buys something saying, "Oh, this is kitty," it's the floor one when it's not because he didn't take the time to inform himself and he believes that the names are all the same. Then I mean, sure, that's a terrible decision on his part, but. We shouldn't. I think we should take that into consideration. Uh, Bobby, yeah. go ahead. No, that's definitely that's definitely the other side. I mean, yeah. if we saved a user from buying a floor crypto kitty, I think we did our job. <laughs> True. True. Um, For, no, I mean that's the, that's the other side of it. So it's like you know, um, I think on one hand, like users come to us, they're like, "Oh, the kitty token by NFTX, that's going to give me exposure to crypto kitties. I'll buy it." Um, and you know, we like Scott says, we've kind of done our job if we direct them towards the more SOV kitties, like the Gen Zero. Um, and you know, most users don't have to know exactly, but yeah i don't know it's, it's just something just, for us to think about we don't have to decide right now alex ju just one thought because basically right now the the problem is the gas associated making the trades like if you buy one kitty mm -hmm. if it's like a floor kitty it's kind of a yeah. waste of uh, money because you're like spending more on gas than the actual nft um mm -hmm. but there's two use cases i could think of which have it make sense to keep Kitty for a floor fund. Uh, first one being if you want to batch buy. So if you want like to buy a hundred kitties at the same time, uh, which nobody Still does. The... So it's, it's kind of a, <laughs> huh? Yeah, I guess, okay. That would only work though if you think they're going to appreciate a lot in the future, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. yeah true. So, true, so, true, true. So, so that's one. And then the other one would be uh, just scaling of Ethereum and the gas uh, cost mm -hmm. being like, uh, infinitely lower, then it makes sense to have a uh, floor pool called Kitty. But I, like, to be honest, I don't really expect that to happen anytime soon. Uh, at that, like, at the rate where gas would be so low that uh, the fund would make sense to have. So, so, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like, consistency is nice, but also having the most used product, uh, which for Kitty would be the Gen Zero pool, uh, being named the strongest, uh, kind of makes more sense versus consistency. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in favor of uh, the better names. I really like yeah. good names. Um, I think, you know, it, it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. But I also get what Finesse is saying. So I think like we would have to be very clear to users like, yeah. um, you know, this, this isn't a floor fund, uh, but this is our most liquid uh, crypto kitty fund, right? So, mm -hmm. What basically mm -hmm. you have to warn people that names mean nothing apart from yeah. like the, the NFT type, not the like quality. Yeah. And, and I the mean, that's the reality current, anyways, right? Well, like, yeah. But the current system is the like opposite of that. So all I was saying is if we want to stick with the current system where we have rule sets and the name is the rule set, then we can't have names that don't follow that. But if we switch I mean, the systems, then that's perfectly fine. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it has to be like a hundred percent thing. It's like how yeah. some most wrapped coins add a W at the beginning, like WETH and WBTC, but then some don't. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I think yeah, we can have our cake and eat it too. We just try and make it as as clear as possible. Yeah. Can we just do like Axie one, Axie two, Axie three, or something? Then, like people, like like you want na- like ease of name. Like most most people aren't gonna look. I agree. Like they literally don't care. They just buy. Yeah. So like Axie Origin is a lot harder than Axie One. I think. Yeah, I, I guess. I think people will just realize that when it has a simple name, that means it's like our featured D One. Yep. And it, yeah. It's, it's, there, there's nothing that will make it seem like it's floor. Um, um like floor won't be in the names. Like but, yeah, I wouldn't want to hold an Axie One because I would get worried that liquidity net effects might go to Axie Two, um, like just as a, a naive user. Yeah, so but, I I agree with what you were saying, Scott. So like, if we change all the names, then it's perfectly fine. We just can't have some names that are basic and some that are not. Yeah, we, we won't have basic yeah. uh, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, yeah, fuck my basic. legacy is gone. <laughs> yeah, that that shit is basic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but it's that that sounds good. And also, like to be fair, whenever we have the front end upgraded in a similar way that the gallery is right now. That's already uh, uh, like a, a big thing that fixes this confusion. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I do, I do think it will be nice. I was, I was on a walk this morning and I was thinking about like, you know, punk instead of punk basic. Um, mm-hmm. It will be useful to like use as a reference point. I could definitely see people in the future being like, oh, you know, normally a female punk is worth one point one punk. Um, mm-hmm. A zombie's worth like 20 punk because it's like a reference point to the immediate yeah. base. Um, so who knows? Maybe that catches on and people find that useful. Mm-hmm. So I think that covers the nomenclature. Uh, Quag, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Um, so JB left, but uh, I was going to ask him if you could give us some updates uh, in regards to what you guys are currently doing. Yeah, so we're currently working on the new front end app uh, with a focus on minting, uh, basically minting, making the minting process easier uh, and redeeming, and then the create vault in that order. Um, the designs from JB on his side are done and are great. And on my side, uh, we started in development. So we've basically got the layouts done of minting, heads and footers are done, and it's just building out the sort of central components of the. Of of the minting process, mainly just like listing uh, the, the tokens you have in your wallet. Basically, when you arrive there and you connect, we're gonna you have to list the ones that you can mint and stuff. Um, so those will be building out um, the seed this week. I think the majority of the work for me is probably going to happen this weekend on it, where I imagine where I expect to have basically all of the pure, I'll call it pure UI built out uh, by this at the end of this this week. And then I'll be working, I believe, with Nick on getting like the JS Web three JS uh, side of it. Uh, implemented so we start wiring up the ui into you know actually minting these things and creating vaults that's the plan all right well thank you guys for building out the uh backbone of everything yeah Yeah, uh, Yeah. hey nick here i just wanted just wanted to quickly add to that um in terms of like the time the timeline after uh that's deployed so we're, we're targeting end of this month but um yet we're trying to get it as soon as possible I feel like all of this should have happened yesterday um so we're working as hard as we can to get this this out the door uh, and then after that it will be a case of um uh building out a like analytics site as well for uh, people that want to drill into the makeup of each fault and get more kind of financial data and performance data uh, so that will be uh following up in april um subject to getting all this data together and um displayed but yeah everyone's like working extremely fast at the moment so it's, it's all looking great yeah we're trying to handhold as many people as well as we can through creating vaults and stuff in the interim you know we've seen people come in and, into the discord and be like oh yeah i want to create a vault and then we obviously give them the guide and they're like oh fuck me look at the steps you know yeah. i can't do this so we're trying to you know i did it with the um the waifu funds last night just went through the steps got up and running you know in the community then picked it up and there's like 80 wives in there uh, yeah in that that was, that's house, amazing but, um so yeah i think anytime people are like interested in, in mentioning funds we're just trying to like grab if we can like handle the stuff and through it be like no it's not you know don't wait for the new front end let's you know get you in there get the fund up and running you know don't go waiting around for it so yeah basically if you see anyone uh sort of loitering try and like point them our way or get you know to the guide 
uh, to one of us. We're trying to get as many basically funds up running and onboarded as we can whilst we're building. And right now, the hardest part is creating the fund. Once that's up and running and you have the tokens, well, I mean, that's it's everything is smooth and easy going. Yeah, pretty. It's pretty much. Um, I still have to. I think minting for the the ERC eleven fifty fives is still tough uh, from the front end. Um, so I'm going to fix that today. Uh, but yeah, you know, as Nick and Quag, everyone's saying, like, um, I definitely feel like I've let some people down by our current front end failing for so long. But do not take that as indication of how things are actually going behind the scenes. Um, I expect a month or two from now, it will look totally differently and no one will ever have to look at my MVP ever again. <laughs> I mean, it's working and I think it's such, such a positive sign that people are using it and, and we are getting a, a great feedback from, you know, just in terms of product market fit. I mean, having a new front end for all of this is, yeah, extremely positive. Yeah, absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the fact that people are still using it despite the friction is, is great. We have people putting in IDs, you know, instead of like the number they want to redeem. It's like, oh, they think they can put in the ID to get the specific one. So we have some people like, I can't afford to pay the gas because they're trying to redeem like token 620. Oh, yeah. They think they're trying to redeem 620 tokens. Yeah, that's uh, that's Ethereum, I guess. Sometimes the, the transactions, they, they fail by just making you pay $2,000 in gas. <laughs> <laughs> is very yeah. helpful <laughs> yeah no. so we're just trying to help as many people as we can yeah get them um, yeah that's, get no, that's, great. Um, that, that's awesome all right so i think that covers the front end we can talk about of uh, uh, a little bit about uh what scott was talking about his uh nftx v2 ideas so to just go over quickly that's uh, a time locked redeem only mode so like uh for initial nft offerings uh different fee systems and uh oh no yeah and different fee systems yeah and you know the funny thing is like the fees i actually had that built into the original contract um and we've had to basically comment it out to make space for other upgrades like the 1155 so um i'm hoping i can pump this out really fast um the, the harder part will be like um, doing some sort of code arena where we're checking for bugs um and also the migration uh, but yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll be like not that reachable this week, but I'll just be trying to get that done. Does anyone have any yeah. ideas or comments? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Chuck. yeah, definitely. Like the I I I think the it's called INO the like initial NFT offering uh, is beautiful because I've been talking a lot with uh, together with JB actually uh, with a lot of like big artists and record labels uh, and like companies like those that don't really know too much yet about the NFT scene. Uh, they're at the brink of releasing their first collection or like they have a huge community, but they don't know how to distribute their NFT uh, in a way that makes sense. Uh, and whenever we get to that topic, uh, this like INO ID, uh, always resonates very well. So I think that will uh, create a great mode for using NFTX as a, like a distribution platform, uh, especially for NFTs that are a, a bit more limited. Like if you if you have a collection of like 500 at, or 1,000 uh, NFTs, but you have a community of uh, 100,000 or a million people, you can't really, you don't want to make them mad, but you can't really distribute everything like uh, uh, something to everybody. Uh, so like fractionalizing it through an INO is great uh, for that. So I think like from the, like it's not there yet, but from the feedback we've already got and the responses from like bigger creators, uh, uh, it, it's looking super promising. Yeah, and then, and then just one thing, if people are kind of talking about um, the design with potential NFT issuers, uh, one other just important thing is that um, so the fees that are sort of the mint redeem fees and then also the target withdraw targeted withdrawal fees, um, those are split uh, with with if the issuer issues through NFTX, that issuer will get 40 percent of that those those fees in perpetuity. Um, so if we do end up 
uh, using this design as written, uh, that would create kind of a residual income stream. And if you're thinking about uh, this residual in income stream versus other um, kind of like secondary market uh, taxes on secondary market sales, um, one key difference is those secondary market sales are only um, are only able to work when that peer to peer trade is done through the uh, through the protocol in the um, in the NFT. Um, and you can imagine if I had a multi sig that owned an NFT and then I sent uh, then I transferred the ownership of that multi sig to someone else, um, the NFT smart contract would not see that as a transfer, but basically you can, you can wrap it and you can avoid the, the fees. Ex right? Exactly. But, but yeah. our fees are, um, are a little, a little more, a little different because they're, um, they're more secured by the economic liquid, the economic utility of the liquidity in the NFTX vault. Um, and so there are more of their fees that are charged because the NFTX protocol would be creating additional value. Um, and so in that way, it's a little more sustainable. Like, well, for especially for people in the music industry, it's it's sort of like an like um, it, it's sort of like how uh, ticket distribution can charge fees because people need that ticket distribution system. Um, but unlike kind of the dominant ticket distributors, uh, this is a bit more open. Um, and anyway. Yeah, yeah. so what I was going to say about that is so having fees directly in the system is what is currently not available and is one reason why Euler Beats kind of blew up for the original LPs. But like right now, you can buy something on Rarible and secondary sales, if they're done on Rarible, will be like rerouted to the original artist. But like, as you said, if you just remove it off the platform, sometimes that just breaks. So it's yeah, a, and yeah. a valid concern. Yeah, and also like if that, that only works if, yeah, if the, if, the, if the NFT itself or the platform itself can know the trade price. But there's no reason there, there you can have a trade on chain or a trade off chain, right? Uh, where, where the payment is sent off chain and then it kind of breaks the model. Yeah, we're not we're not stopping anybody from providing liquidity or trading on another venue. It's just that uh, we're making it uh, very advantageous for liquidity providers to put their liquidity in, in our uh, in our approved system because of the residual income and and any you know future NFTX resort rewards that would also be allocated. Yeah, like you're using NFTX because it is better. Yeah, so not because you have to pay it. It, One. Just just to jump in here quickly um, for everyone else, because I, I was talking to Scott about this yesterday and a point he made, which I, I really liked, um, is that, you know, many people build things in the crypto space um, and they have great ideas um, and they can even find product market fit, but it can be hard to capitalize that or to charge. Um, and that, you know, often the most successful uh, projects or protocols are just ones that align incentives in new ways, sort of like Uniswap. Um, it created this new system of incentives that were aligned. Um, and I think that's the direction we're going here. We're kind of, it's creating a new system of incentives, which aligns between liquidity providers and the creators and the holders um, and NFTX. Um, so I'm really excited by that, yeah. Sorry, and rant. Uh, one one concern that I did have was um, I would want the minimum fee to be zero because like some artists or creators may say, oh, well, I don't want the NFT to be like fragmented. And the way it currently stands is like when you like, even though you have a percent ownership, you, you don't you need whole units for NFTs. Like the interface is not there yet. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, the, the fees are the fees are settable. The, the fees will be the fees uh, are just parameters on the smart contract. I, yep. I think for many NFTs, they will actually want to set like no um, uh, no redeem fee, but have kind of like a mint fee. Is probably but they want the will want the directed redeem fee, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it, when, people, it, when people choose a particular NFT, that will have an added that will have like ten percent or something. 
Yeah, we want the protocol, even though it should be targeted or it is targeted to like solve specific problems, we want to leave it as much flexibility as we can um, to kind of like let the let people figure out what's best yeah, uh, that's, for their specific NFT. I think that's the reason why Uniswap was like scaling at the speed that it did is because it just lets the users figure out what is best. Is there yeah. just, just on the redeeming side, is there any merit in like a right of first refusal? Um, aspect to someone depositing because I think like the, the main issue with minting is that people don't want to mint an NFT they have they're tied to emotionally. What what do you mean by right to first refusal? So oh, if I see what you mean. It, so yeah, they you, can have, like, the... you still have ownership of that. Um, so that's actually something I'm hoping we can build on top. Um, and what that would be, it's a slightly different product in my opinion. So like right now how it works, it's kind of like wrapped Bitcoin. If you want a uh, wrapped Bitcoin, you have to literally give up ownership of your Bitcoin. Um, whereas DAI is a little bit different, like you're locking up your ETH and then you can get it back later. Um, I think that can be built on top of NFTX. So we could say like, hey, if you would like the benefits of liquidity, um, but still have uh, the ability to get back your original NFT, uh, then that's more like a lending platform. And basically what you do is you'd lock up your NFT and then you get uh, a loan in the form of the fungible token for the fund. Um, and then you get like some low interest rate. So if that makes I, sense. I, I don't think like we should go in depth on the, on the call, like about this, cause it's uh, like nearing the end of the time limit or data limit for the recording. But um, I think it's more a synthetic platform or like usage than like collateral because you're you want the same thing yeah you'd be trading an nft for a synth of that same nft yeah um it's just i mean synthetics gets really complicated um yep and I, don't, I don't have yeah i don't have the ability to do that i mean i but, think in um, general if someone wants to retain an attachment to the nft um that they're making fungible that's that's going to be like a different mechanism design exactly uh, yeah, i agree with that it's completely it's, different uh, it's very important for us to have atomicity with with, with yep. the absolutely yeah um so yeah that's something like i would like you know maybe we could suggest it in a hackathon or something or a product that somebody tries to build on top or leverage nftx but mm -hmm. yeah probably not good to uh, mix it darius what's up uh hey guys uh, uh I'm from yep. uh, Jobs Platform. Uh, maybe you have uh, already seen it and been listening about this call about the uh, uh, utility of uh, of NFTs. And basically, you mentioned this topic about uh, how those NFTs could be landed. And uh, so that's what we are planning to do uh, to create the trustless NFT lending by leveraging uh, NFTX and NFT20 protocols. And oh, nice. so basically what, what, what we want to create, uh, it, it will be a fork of a compound, which will be accepting ERC-20 tokens, but uh, we need kind of uh, a second layer uh, where users can deposit the NFTs and then it gets locked and nobody can basically take it as long as user's LTV value is healthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, for that, uh, well, we would need to basically, I think, have a minting right uh, for NFTs, well, for, for ERC-20 tokens. And uh, that way, yeah, we could actually, uh, those NFTs that are at, uh, are at NFTX, they could be used as collateral. And uh, yeah, it also create, uh, well, basically unlimited amount of use cases uh, afterwards, like the uh, NFTs from FTX could be used for, I know, like farming strategies and, uh, well, a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Hey, hey, Darius, that sounds really interesting, but I think maybe like just talking about like collaborations and sort of biz dev stuff might be might be a little uh might be better like in the discord than kind of on a governance well, i'm actually yeah. I'm, I'm actually yeah I, i'm actually really interested in that because that's one use case i've i've always um thought about from the beginning with nftx um d like maybe we could set up a meeting with chop darius um all right yeah have, it would be we could have a happy call. to have that um so chop chops email is just chop at nftx.org yeah i'll um, type it in the chat 
Yeah, because so, I would love I would love to discuss that. What I wanted to say was like in agreement with Scott. So it's perfect that you raise this, but like it's not something we should talk about on the governance call. But oh, just oh, say uh, like yeah, so, sorry guys. No, 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 no the... you did the right thing. Like you should ask, like, is this of interest? And then move forward from there, like what just happened. But like it just has to be just like a, a intro to the topic, like what you did basically, not like an in depth conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, for a minute there, I was like, oh, man, what are we going to get sold? But uh, I really like that idea, so I'm excited to talk more. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, cool. so, yeah, that's that's all from me. And thank you. Thank you a lot for hearing me out. Well, thank you yeah, for, for sure. participating in Governance Room. And <laughs> I think that covers the call. We went over every topic. Does anyone have any last thoughts? Um, well, yeah, one, one topic, by the way. Um, for XIP4 and basically the, the redesigned XIP4, uh, like spawning all the liquidity uh, in combination with the naming of Alex, uh, what he says, like, what's the timeline, Alex, to for you to rename everything before we list uh, liquidity? So I, I was I was talking with Will and Scott last night and Will suggested that maybe it makes sense to align the naming changes um, with uh the new d1 uh contract so that okay. like when that yeah. migration yeah. happens we also do the naming migration yeah. um which i think probably makes sense i have to think through the details a bit more but yeah that seems and yeah. and that will be a couple weeks because you know i got to finish this contract then we got to get it um got to get it checked for bugs and yeah no that's that's great so that we don't have to like uh, scram everything into this week uh yeah and uh, maybe fuck some things up Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you to everyone for participating in governance. Uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, y'all.